Hey guys, um, so this week's track walk is at VIR in the full course configuration. We're in the 911 GT3R. As usual, I'm going to play the lap in full in cockpit view and then we'll do it in chase view and then we'll do some track analysis. Now here's the lap in Chase View. Um, so for your reference, that lap was a 145.63. Um, I think the only thing that I would want to mention about this track um, is something that I've mentioned previously about, you know, when uh, as you get more advanced, one thing that you learn to do is that even when... Um, either you make a mistake or you know you're on the wrong line or something there's always ways to come back and I feel like this is a very difficult track when you're going fast and it's very easy to get slightly offline however um, 
on a lot of the corners, it's it's also really easy basically to gain back the time and bring it back, which is kind of implying that there are essentially um, a lot of lines. Um, so you know, if if there's a chance, I'll mention a couple. But uh, this this lap is basically the line that um, I like to aim to take, and and I think is um, usually the one that that works the best. All right, so coming out of the last turn, um, you want to bring it over to the right side, and then you're basically gonna. Um, hug the right side all the way up until about this tree, and then you want to just start tracking out over to the left for the first right-hander. Um, I think I am aiming basically for right between the two and the three is where I'm reaching uh, peak brake pressure. Um, and then it looks like you're going to be turning in a little early, but that's because we have a really big horseshoe here. It's kind of you know, turns one and two. It's kind of a little bit like Lime Rock. You're kind of, um, kind of a double apex, um, but that's that's kind of debatable. Um, so right around here, which is around the one board, that's when I'm starting my turn in. Um, and then right here at the end of this curbing is pretty much when I'm apexing. And as you can see, this is when my steering starts to open up. Um, also while coming in here, I like to get up on this curbing. I feel like, um, I don't know if you notice, the curbing is smooth on the left and then like towards the inside, it's, um, it's graded. And I feel like if you can get your tire, especially onto that graded part, but not in the grass, so it's, there's a fine line, you need to be careful. Um, I feel like it does help you hook around. Um... So I kind of get up on here a little bit, hook around, and that's my late apex. This is when I'm starting to open up my steering a little bit. Um, and now what I was going to say is that a lot of people will hug, keep it a little tighter here and come back in. And they'll apex at the end of this curbing here. But as you can see, I'm a little further out wide. And this is actually one of the turns where, again, I feel like there are multiple lines because... Um, well, as you, as you see here, you come around, and right about here is where you want to line up. And so that's, I'm trying to keep one constant curve all the way to here. If I had apex, if I was closer to the curb here, I would have to keep much tighter steering angle in, in order to stay over to the right side by the time I got to the end of this turn. And I would not be able to necessarily keep full throttle you know you, you might end up with some oversteer and scrubbing the tires or sometimes even just hook it into the grass on the inside um so so that's one there are like just in general multiple lines people take i feel like this one is smarter um but what i would like to point out that a lot of times people will come into this turn um a little hot and it's not necessarily the end of the world. If you let's pretend carry too much speed here, and then you go, you know, a little out wide here, let's pretend you're in the middle of the track, you know what I would do already at this point? I would go to full throttle. See, I'm not at full throttle because I am keeping it a little tighter. I'm taking, you know, the, uh, the ideal line, per se. Um, but what I would then do is go full throttle. Of course, you're going full throttle, you're going to have to open up your steering. So I would open up my steering, and I would track all the way out to that curbing on the outside and I have found times when um, doing that is just still beneficial you may be lengthening the track but you're going full throttle for so much longer that all the speed you pick up you'll see at first your delta may go negative but then as you're coming around and coming around you're gonna see your delta come back and you're almost at like break even by the time you get to here you know so so that's what I mean. Like, if if you do mess up, just think about how you can gain back that time. And I just again, like, I feel like there are a lot of turns here where they're easy to mess up. Because even that turn one, I almost feel like the road it it doesn't necessarily look like it, but it feels like it's off camber. It's often very easy to scrub out wide there. Um, so. There's just a lot of corners like that where when you're pushing it and you're on edge for some reason, it's just very easy to uh, to mess up the line a little bit. But again, if then there's ways to you basically fix it. Um, this is another turn. There, are, there. I feel like there are a lot of lines through here. Um, 
I would say one of the safer ones is is not actually what I did here. Um, I'll go over that next. But one of the safe ones is keep it full throttle. I, I would still be full throttle here, full throttle. And then right around here, I would have, first of all, stayed tighter to the left, maybe even gotten up on that curbing. And then I would completely straighten out my wheel so that I could brake um, in, a, in a straight line. And I'd, and I'd be going faster than I am right now. Um, so I can break in a straight line all the way out to there and then cut it in while what I did here, um, it's, it's a very slight nuance, but what it, my intention essentially here was to go a little slower. I kind of miss this curbing a little bit. I'm, I'm a little further out, maybe like half a car width. Um, and and what I want to do is try to slow down as I'm still turning. So I have a little bit of steering input here. As I put on the brakes, I had to straighten out the wheel a little bit, but you know, for a split second. See, I have steering angle, steering angle, straight a little bit, but now steering angle, steering angle. So I could never get on the brakes that hard. Um, I feel like uh, if you're in a race and you need to defend, you may not necessarily want to keep your inside open so you could actually, even at that point, go you know full throttle here turn even more and now instead of tracking out like it did here keep it on the inside and then straighten out the wheel really quick brake really hard on the straight line and then hook it back in um, i feel like there's a lot of ways to get through here i also feel like when the track temp is hotter the line that i took now with trying to brake and turn at the same time you'll get your rear to come around on you a lot i think uh i think this lap uh, the track temps were like in the 80s or something like that, like 85 or something like that. Um, so, you know, it, depending on whether you're racing, depending on, you know, track temps and everything, it can definitely affect your line, I feel like, in this corner. Um, it's one kind of swooping left-hander, but you can basically, what I call tri triangling it out, meaning straighten out the wheel, brake really hard, then turn in. Um... And so you end up with multiple lines through here. And again, so like I said, if, if you screw up the turn, there's usually ways of fixing it because there's just a lot of track to play with here. Um, so now as we turn in here, again here, um, I feel like there are times when I'm keeping it tighter. What I will do is cut completely over this where I'll have my left side wheels into the grass. So I'll really cut this curbing. And as long as you get on the gas before you hit it, you it won't throw the car around too much, um, but be uh, you'll you will um, have shortened the track enough to gain back any time that you lost in speed. Um, safe bet is pretty much what I did here. Just basically, just you barely graze the outside of it, um, and pretty much as you're coming into this apex, you already want to be on throttle because you have you have a uh, because the track opens up a little bit here, so you have some some track out room. Um, there's no real brake markers here. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe halfway from the end of that curbing to basically here is where I start my braking. Um, just kind of got to feel it out. Um, but you basically just want to quickly shave off some speed. Um, this corner, you need to sacrifice it. You want to keep the car... Um, not past the middle of the track um, as you track out. If anything, even further to the left may be more beneficial because um, you are pretty much on throttle for a very long way here. Even though your next two corners you're going to have to lift for, um, I feel like if you are carrying a little bit more speed, even though you're going to have to lift, um, it's more about maintenance speed versus slowing down just because of your turn in um so you can still actually carry a lot of speed through the corners if you had a little extra um so to uh to make sure we stay over to the left here i do like to usually um get on this curbing here that and and even getting a foot in the grass there again will help it hook around um so again not more than the middle of the track and then we want to go in here again as I as I go over this curbing, I'll lift a little bit um, to bring it back in. And then once I come off of this one, I want to try to get the full throttle for a little bit here. 
and then again coming over to this one we're definitely going to have to lift and um you're basically going to have to play with the throttle there again depending on track temp and and a lot of things um the grip is a little it's a little funny coming coming over here um, like I feel like a lot of times I can keep a full throttle while in in here I had to do a little bit of a lift um, and then I went back to full throttle for a second just because I didn't have the grip so I feel like you just need to play with this corner a little bit but essentially as you need you're making your turn ins here you don't want to again you're kind of sacrificing this one you don't want to be too far to the left coming over here because now you have a left hander over here you want to try to open up um, and now you're going to be going full throttle pretty much from here all the way through the S's. So you definitely want to sacrifice this corner to open up your next ones. Um, but again, I'm, as you can see right here, like I have my, you know, right side tires up on this curbing practically in the grass. You, if you just look straight ahead right now, you want to straighten this out as much as possible. And we're going to do it through the main S's too. Um, but once we're coming off of this... You want to go to full throttle, and that's it. Full throttle, get your tires in that dirt over there, straighten this one out, straighten this one out. I'm trying to turn the wheel as little as possible. All right, now we're coming up to the S's here. Um, just want to say over to the right here, I even, um, I think like, if you can, like use a little bit of this exit road to really open up this next left, left hander, that can help a little bit. Um, this one, I would get my left side tires up on that curbing, and right about here, I'm 100% putting my right side tires in the dirt. What I'm trying to see past this curb at the next one, and if you look at that next one right now, I'm I'm kind of a little bit lined up a little bit to the right of it, because what I actually want to do is have my left side tires go on that curbing. I've done it both ways. I've had my, I've gone like com aimed completely dead on for it so that my left side tires end up in the grass there. Um, I just find that sometimes it can, if you don't hit it right, it can compromise your next right hander. So I prefer to aim a little bit to the right so that as I'm hitting it right now, my left side tires are going on the curbing. They're not in the grass. <laughs> um, and you kind of want to get it again in that little grooved part of the curb. I feel like that. Um, just helps you get some grip and, and hook around. So let's just go back here real quick. Remember again, this is all full throttle. So as you can see right now, I'm actually aiming towards the right. You know, I want to open this up as much as possible. And then I start to turn in the left side tires on that curbing. You want to straighten this out with the next one, right side tires in the grass, left side tires in this curbing, you turn. And now here, you're essentially trying to late apex this here. See, I'm apexing like right now, basically. Um, now I'm starting to open up my steering. You you want to make sure you end up on the right side here. Um, again, if track temps are hot, I've noticed I get slight bit of oversteer there. You may want to lift a little bit, but you should be on throttle. Even if you lift like slightly, let's say, you know, right around here as, as you start to crest this hill because the car is going to get a little bit of light. You still want to be on throttle and as close to full throttle as possible. Here, I was able to still stay at full throttle. It's not until right here where the track kind of levels out and you, you've you uh, crested the hill. That's when you want to start your braking. But this is essentially going to be a real quick uh, stab at the brake to shave off the speed. And then you want to immediately get off the brakes. The, the biggest uh, mistake people do here is... Like a lot of other corners, they want to trail the brake in. The problem is that the track drops away from you into this left-hander. And if you're at all on the brakes, even just a slight 5% trail brake, you are going to spin, spin the rears. Um, so what I like to do is just have a slight bit of throttle. And then once I've crested the downhill, then I want to get on the throttle to try to dig the rear back in. So, so right here, quick stab of the brakes and I'm immediately off. And I'm, I'm on throttle way before I get to this curbing. I'm on throttle right here. I'm already starting to get on throttle. I just want a little bit of throttle 
and basically uh, help stabilize the car. Um, if you go full throttle too soon, then it's also possible to slightly um, to, to spin the rear here. Um, just do not be on the brakes. If you're on the brakes, like anywhere past, I'd say like this point here, if you think, oh, let me still, still trail it and try to late apex this or something. First of all, you don't need late apex because it's very, um, it has a very large, large angle this turn, you know, so, um, you essentially have a lot of track out. <sighs> Just make sure that you are a hundred percent on the gas by the time you come here and almost anticipate a, um, a slight bit of oversteer always just because of the fact that the tra track drops away from you. I mean, I didn't have to put in any real counter steer here, you know, maybe for a split second. Let's just look at the wheel, you know, right before that, maybe slightly, but basically, um, as long as you anticipate it, and and try to straighten out your real quick you'll you'll be fine um just don't be on the brakes because you will very easily spin this right into the inside wall um all right so now bring it back over to the left here um and where do i saw my braking so yeah i'm trying to aim i guess in between the one and the two um it's a hard break and then you don't really start bleeding off too much until you reach this apex here and this track, I don't, I don't know if it's actually off camber or if it's just, um, just like the surface or something. It gets very slippery right here. So by the time you reach this curbing, you don't want to be going too fast. If you are trail braking too much over here, it's very easily to just, it's very easy to just go wide. And the moment you touch the grass here, you're spinning right into the tire wall. So. Make sure you're slow enough here so that you just need a slight trail break, but remember to trail break. If you're coasting here, you can also still go out wide. Um, if you're on a throttle, you will definitely push out wide with this car. You want to basically just have a slight, you know, 5-10% trail break all the way around, and then once you reach this curbing, that's when you get on throttle. And, and, and obviously, if you're... Um, cutting the curbing like I am here, which I recommend because even though in real life we have a lot of exit curb here in the sim, you don't yet because I haven't updated this track. It's all dirt, so you got to keep it a little tighter than instinctively you want to. Um, so to do that, it uh, makes sense to cut this curb, and and when falling off of this curb, you want to have your wheel straight, but um, you don't want to bounce around too much. So just make sure on a throttle, basically by the time you hit this curb. So you take that, straighten out the wheel, and then go to full throttle. And like I said, all that dirt in real life um, is is more curbing. So um, just remember going around that tree, just trail break all the way to keep you turned in, keeping the front end grip. Um, otherwise, just really easy to go out wide there. Um, down this back straight, um, you know, a lot of passing happens here, so just be careful. Uh, going into the roller coaster, especially sometimes too wide, can be super, super dangerous. <laughs> um, uh, by the time you get here, just make sure you're over to the right side. And I think I don't break. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm past even that turn in sign there. A lot of people, and this is actually a good passing opportunity, not necessarily going in too wide, but just to straight up pass people, because a lot of people will break early here. So if you can break late here, it's very easy to make some good passes. Um, so I am breaking, yeah, maybe like a few car widths, uh, car lengths past that uh, turn in sign. You want to break really, really hard here. Um, you want to aim slightly to the right of that curbing on the left. You basically want to get your left side tires up onto this curbing. When I do, I get off the brakes a little bit one just because um you lose a little bit of traction on there if you're still braking two you're cresting a hill here um you're gonna in this car you have abs you're not gonna lock up but you're going to basically definitely trigger the abs and probably end up flying over this hill so i get off the brakes for a bit but then once i crest then i'm back on the brakes again hard 
Um, I did like practically a, a full lift to the brakes here. You don't have to do that, but just just at least get off the brakes a little bit. I, I knew I shaved off enough speed, so I was okay. Back on the brakes, and then you want to keep this tight. Again, that graded curbing on the inside, I think it's very important to hook your tires into. Here, let's uh, switch to Chase View, uh, Chase View real quick here. Yeah, see where my, my right side tires are? Basically, I, I go up and I just get my tires into that, and you can see I basically took it all the way around. Um, I just I've just noticed it just it just feels like um, there may not be grip in when you're braking, for example. Um, you know, like like we are are back here, but I've just noticed. You know, I think it has more to do with the camber of that graded curbing, but basically, if you can hook your tires into there. It's really easy to to keep the brakes trailed or even be on the gas. See, I'm already on the gas here, and I'm still in there, and I'm not pushing out wide. That's just hooking me in there. Um, let's try to get your tires into there, but basically you wanna you wanna sacrifice your exit on this one because of the left hander coming up. So I don't track out more to the uh, than the middle of the track here, and then I immediately start to bring it over to the left. You should be able to go full throttle throughout all of this track out and then as we turn in here that's when I lift um, going over here you want to try to get your like left side tires in the grass here like you want to cut this a lot just to open up the next right hander but because you are going into the grass again you can't break too hard so you know I'm, it's a little bit of break there and as I'm really going over the curb in the grass I'm basically lifting off the brakes right there but then once I'm back onto the pavement um, get the braking done and then I like to try to essentially get my right side tires in the grass here too. Um, and I want to get a throttle before that um, just because it keeps the car more settled. And if you get it right, if you're still going fast enough, you hit this first curbing and then your right side tires will land on the pavement past the end of the curbing if you, if you get it right. So you kind of like bounce off of it so like you bounce over this I'm in the air and my right side tires land right on the right on the asphalt um, if you're not comfortable with all the all the stuff that I do with the curbs what I would do is just you know as you're coming off of this I would angle just you know slightly more to the left break in a straight line and then you know you can turn in a little bit later you do have a lot of track out here in that but if I was doing that I would make sure that by the time I'm like obviously the car would be like you know half a car lanes to the to the left a uh, car would to the left I would just make sure that I'm full throttle by then because I'm not going through a full throttle till now you should be full throttle back at that apex and then like as you can see I also don't track out all the way here because I shortened um, I shortened the track where, where I did you should go to full throttle use up more of the track um, you're probably going to be carrying so much speed that you're really going to go all the way around and probably completely miss that apex right there um, and track out over here. So you'll scrub a little bit of speed off there. So it kind of evens out, but it's um, a little, uh, I guess you can say, um, you know, safer or just uh, there's not that many variables since you're not bouncing off of the curbing. Um, but yeah, and then as you saw, we just, uh, you know, tracked out um, back here again I uh, this is where I say like you know if you mess up like I'm not you know into that apex but I felt like if I turn my steering a little bit more to make that apex then I'd be scrubbing the front tires a little too much and shave off some speed so instead I wanted to make sure I stayed full throttle and missed it and just tracked out a little bit more you want to just always make sure that you can stay full throttle and not scrub the tires for as long as possible. That's going to get you your fastest lap times in, in general. Um, and then we bring it back over to the right here. And again, we are back at start finish, so we don't start tracking out until, uh, you know, we pass that tree. Um, yeah, so uh, I think VIR is a ridiculously fun track, but I think just because of all the hills and everything and... And the track, like I said, I don't know if it, it is off camber or if it, it just feels like it, but there's a lot of tricky turns here. Just 
making sure your tires got the grip. Um, but again, if you don't get your line right, there's all you gotta always just think of a way to fix it. There's always ways to to get back the time. Um, when I was when I was uh, running the session to uh, try to do the track walk lap, I had done like three or four laps in a row w- that were all within one tenth, and um, I was looking at every lap and they were all different. You know, um, this I finally got a lap here w- w- with the line I wanted to show you guys, but there's there's always ways to to fix um, a slight misstep, so. I think this is just a great track to essentially practice that, you know, to learn that. It, it's something that all the advanced guys can do. I mean, and you watch F1 or something, and guys are running laps within the hundredths, you know, back to back, and they they do that not necessarily because they are literally breaking at the exact same dot on the pavement or something. No, I mean that's practically impossible. Um, you know, they break, you know five inches earlier they they have you know one percent less brake pressure or whatever they'll they'll make it up and it's the same thing they're not literally on the exact same line lap to lap but that's just something that as you advance you should be able to do you should be able to always fix your mistakes um and so that's uh that's what this track i think is really great to track track to practice um so yeah, so that's it. That was uh, the track walk for VIR, the full course configuration in the GT3R. And I will see you guys on Thursday. Good luck, guys.